It's been one year since the release of the Oculus Quest 2, and one year later, here's what you should know for what seemed like the longest time. PC and VR, if I saw that attached to a game or any kind of thing at all, I was like, that's for other people, that's for something else. But with it being 300 bucks, the entry point to VR has gotten a whole lot more affordable and a whole lot easier than it used to be just three years ago. But here's the big elephant in the room right off the bat that we have to talk about. A Facebook login is required to use the Oculus Quest 2. And if your account gets banned or hacked or just whatever for any reason be it your fault or not your fault, you could very well be locked out of using your $300 headset. And I'll deep dive a little bit further on Facebook using your data to try to target ads to you on the GigaShots podcast. And I'll also touch on how they change their user interface more than I used to change my MySpace page back in the day. All that can be got wherever you get your podcasts and Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I don't believe Facebook does podcasts, so we're safe there. They haven't touched that area yet. This is a product that really does need to be test driven before you make the dive in purchasing one. I was so fortunate to have two friends who's a artist and an avid gamer who I was able to try their headset out. Software to get your feet wet like First Steps and Goliath can really show you the potential of what is capable when using VR. In the first year there was face mask recalls, there was recalls in a pro head strap that had a battery attached to it for Oculus. So they've skipped in some areas on some of the parts used to make the Oculus Quest 2 that they didn't seem like they really did before. However, this is getting ironed out. The Oculus Quest 2 even now comes with double the storage for $300 than it did a year ago at launch. What exactly is the real cost of the Oculus Quest 2? A hyperallergenic mask is definitely highly recommended. A elite head strap is highly recommended for weight distribution and just overall comfort of the headset on your head, as well as security to try to make it a little bit more snug. If you've got glasses, that can be a little bit of a situation. There is a piece that comes with it to help it extend out for those that do wear glasses. I'm not telling anybody to get contact lenses or add that to the price or anything, but definitely keep that in mind. If you're not wearing glasses, you might have a little bit more of a comfortable feel when wearing an Oculus Quest 2. A carry case is gonna be needed and I went with one that also had this stand included on it because I'm, I'm like that. I wanna display it from time to time and not put it away in the closet all the time. Full disclosure, after months of using, there have been some times where it has sat inside of the case and hasn't gotten used. So definitely keep that in mind. I'll touch about how your mileage may vary a little bit later on in the video. If you want to use VR PC, that just means using the Oculus Quest 2 to basically play games like Half-Life Allies. You're going to want to use the Air Link, and there's other options like using a USB-C cable hooked up into it. That cable is very, very overpriced. Surprisingly, Oculus has kind of undercut that cable because of other apps that have been available. So you'll be looking at a Wi-Fi router that is 5 gigahertz using AC or AS 802.11. So depending on whatever the base model is, gonna cost you, I would say maybe have another 150 or so depending on where you get these extra add-ons that I think are gonna be really, really useful and help you enjoy your Oculus Quest 2 a whole lot more. The software lineup for dedicated Oculus software that will run without a PC, it might not be for everybody. Saints and Sinners Walking Dead game is really huge, just Beat Saber, but also Beat Saber can be played on PC where you can put your own music in those tracks. That's something to consider the PC side with this headset. This is why you want to use Air Link and to play things like Star Wars Squadrons. That's brilliant. It's going to work. It's going to work. It didn't work. It didn't work. That didn't work. Half-Life Alex is a modern masterpiece and it really is the future of gaming. You can pull all that off with a PC and this headset. But as far as dedicated gaming goes, the future is a little murky on just how many top tier titles are gonna be on the way. We know Facebook's got the money. We know they're backing cash into this thing by the boatload. So we shall see how the gaming space continues to evolve for dedicated games on the Quest 2. There are some negatives I gotta point out here because this is what I'm here to talk to you about today. When it comes to putting this headset on and trying to make a push into productivity and workspace stuff, I don't feel like putting a headset on is something I wanna do to do work activities. This is personal preference. Some people will be quite fine and all right with that. It is not a motivator to get me ready to do things that I'm not super keen on doing to throw a headset on. If I have a slight headache, a little bit of eye ache, and I 
really suffer from too much screen usage and looking at screens too much, this is not the thing I wanna put on. However, on the flip side of me having problems with eye strain, looking at screens a lot, this does not cause that. Believe it or not, putting two LCD screens close to your eyeballs doesn't really cause as much of a headache as it would just looking at a plain old fashioned flat screen panel. Who knew? Going further here on my trusty notepad. Let's answer the question. Should you get an Oculus Quest 2 one year removed? Like I always like to say, depends. There's been steps towards productivity, 3D sculpting you can do, 3D movie watching, your own VR development, filmmaking tools for use in a 3D space, there's dedicated gaming with the headset, PC VR is open to you, watching YouTube videos to make it feel like it's on a big screen, animated videos look really, really good on this headset, and of course, VR porn. For me, VR is a niche product, and I think anyone will agree it is a niche product. However, I will say I've never had a piece of tech that made me go into this sense of, oh wow, this awe, this excitement, made me just go full on Keanu, whoa. <laughs> it, it just doesn't get old. No other tech product I can think of, outside of maybe some Sony cameras, has made me really, really jaw drop like this. And for feeling like that, I hope everybody can have that type of experience with VR. So for me, all the little parts add up to be one worthwhile experience and worth the price tag to hop into VR right now, today. The future maybe is VR and AR with augmented reality, and the future is already sitting right here beside me. Let me point out right here that shirts such as this Jaeger Shots tee and channel theme apparel was available right now at JaegerShots.com as well as other photo and video related tees. Stop by the store because it really does help me out. And I've got a few more videos speaking on features available with the Oculus Quest 2 for you to check out on the channel. You can hit me up on the podcast, the Jaeger Shots podcast where I go a little bit further into the business side of this piece of tech. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button and subscribe to never miss a shot from JaegerShots.com.